Hi everyone, this is Sagar Shah and today I'm going to do a product review. In front of me is the opening encyclopedia 2019 by Chessbase which was just released a couple of days ago and it is considered by many as the ultimate guide to becoming a better opening player. What exactly does it contain? Let's have a look. On your left you have six tabs which is introduction, ideas for your repertoire, videos, ECO list, games database and surveys. Now if I go to the ECO list, this is how the old version of the opening encyclopedia looked like. You have all the opening reports sorted as per the ECO code. So if you go to A00 that is Sokolsky, if you go to A44 that's Old Benoni, if you go down B08 is Perk and basically it's not so easy to understand which opening has which code. People who used to play back in the old times were very well versed with this ECO code which starts from A00 to E99. They were experts so they could tell exactly which opening was which code. But nowadays we do not know. So the way I had found out was for example, let's say I want to know a specific opening. Uh, say E4, C6, D4, D5 knight c3 oops knight to c3 d takes e4 knight takes e4 knight f6 and i want to know what is the eco code of this position so i used to just go control s save uh, just i don't want to save the game but when you try to save it you already are shown the eco code here b15 so i would cancel the uh, saving part of the game and then go back to the opening encyclopedia here and I would go to B15 here B15 and then I would see okay is there any uh, openings report on this and yes there is one by Petra Pop and then I would go through it uh, I will go through this report carefully she's written about it and I would learn more but this is kind of a tedious way to do stuff and that's the reason why what the new look of the opening encyclopedia that you can see now is the ideas for your repertoire. Now this tab has uh, divided the opening phase into open games, semi-open games, closed openings, semi-closed openings, English opening and ready and flank openings. So to search your games becomes much easier. Now for example, let's say tomorrow I'm playing a game and I'm going to face an opponent who is a Grunfeld player. Okay, so I try to find where the Grunfeld is. Uh, is it in the closed openings? No, so is it in semi-closed openings? Yes. So I see the Grunfeld defense here and I realize that he plays d4 nf6 so let me just get the board here uh, so he plays d4 nf6 c4 g6 nc3 d5 and i want to find an interesting line against this from the white side what do i do so i'll i'll just have a look here and i'll try to see if there is some line where i can surprise my opponent early on so you see here 5 h4 this looks interesting 5 cd5 nd5 queen b3 this is also nice and there's also 5 queen a4 check so the earlier i can surprise him which is uh, right now the fourth move also here there is e3 there's so many different ideas now i'm spoiled for choice let me look at 4 e3 uh, bg7 and this is by michael kresenko who writes the name as humble grunfeld you know kresenko is one of the topmost gms uh, when it comes to opening theory and he's written the Grunfeld defense is a provocative opening black invites his opponent to create a strong pawn center and then starts attacking it most of the heated theoretical discussions have taken place in this kind of variation so he goes on and then over here he says e3 bishop g7 and black plan is clear he will castle and then play c5 and attack white center but here uh, there is a move bishop d2, there is a move b4 and in for every move if you click on the game it will open a game with annotations over here. So I can actually play through this game 
and I can look through the annotations uh, given by Krasenko and uh, here it goes out I think this is the entire line from black side now I can also go below and try to find something more interesting and I say okay how about phi queen a4 check and this line is given by Boris Auruk, another expert in the opening phase and he explains what queen a4 check is all about uh, and he, he says that bishop d7 is one possibility in this position and so is c6 so here if we open the move d4 knight f6 c4 g6 d5 cd knight d5 queen a4 c6 and now after e4 takes takes he goes on and you know you have this pawn structure here all the analysis you can see on your right side you can play through this entire game with his annotations then move on in the report as you go down you will see different lines I think overall such a report would take around an hour or hour and a half to cover all the lines and believe me you will have a powerful weapon against the Grunfeld so this is how things work now for example let's say you're playing black pieces so I'll take black on my side an opponent plays e4 you play c5 knight f3 and you want to play the Sveshnikov just like Magnus Carlsen is doing all these days but your opponent just you know throws cold water on your dreams with bishop b5 now you want to play something interesting here you know that g6 is an option e6 is an option all these moves even d6 is one more option in this position so but how can you look at something more interesting so let's go to semi open games in its Sicilian defense and we go to Rosolimo variation and here you will see e6 uh, there is also e6 castles and here I see an interesting line bishop b5 knight a5 what is this so what Leonid Kritz, who is also a GM, he suggests is that in this position over here, black can go for the move knight to a5. Wow, this looks completely crazy. I mean, you're moving your knight to the side of the board. But let's understand why he says so. And he says knight a5, the knight move looks really funny. But the question is whether white can really take advantage of this position of the knight. In any case, black will gain a tempo by means of a6 and at some point white plays d4, the knight can under appropriate circumstances go to c4 later on. All in all, something can be said in favor of the knight move. So I can go through this entire report with some annotated games uh, here by crates. Um, I don't know if strong players have played this but I am sure that it is something interesting to try out and he can at the end he sums up to sum up we can say 3 knight a5 variation is absolutely playable but if white plays as suggested in this article black will find it very difficult to gain counterplay. So this is how uh, there are over 1100 such opening reports 1100 that's a lot in French defense you have under whenever classical French Tarash if you open any one of them inside it you will find so many opening uh, reports by top players like Auruk, Krasenko, Erwin Lamy um, you name it yeah Abhijit Gupta has written a few there's also by Vidit by I have also written a couple of uh, opening uh, reports in this so that's how this entire new ideas for your repertoire tab works it's based on different kinds of <clears throat> games that you go through now the next tab that you look at is videos and I think this is extremely powerful this was not there in any of the previous versions so in this you will find not one, not two, not three, but 20 videos and each video is 20 minutes approximately in length. So here you will see Lawrence Trent, 6 bishop e2, a positional weapon versus Nidorf. Okay, so a white weapon against Nidorf. Pelletier gives 
9 BG5 versus the King's Indian. Okay, so a weapon against the King's Indian. Then you have Simon Williams ready for white, a dangerous attacking plan. As you can see here, already he has shown some attacking plans from white. Mihail Marin gives a, an idea for open Spanish players from the black side. He speaks about Mamediaro's tricky bishop e7 move. Then you have Erwin Lamy talking about b6 in the French, which is Caruana's interesting idea. As you know, Erwin is Anish Giri's second, so he has really good ideas up his sleeve. Daniel King gives an antidote against the London system from black side. Yannick Pelletier says, how does Kramnik fight the Italian from black? So he gives an idea, an idea over there. Lawrence Trent, the Italian game. Uh, this looks like one from the white side. Daniel King speaks about the Grand attack. I think it's a good repertoire option from white against the Sicilian. Mihail Marin speaks about the Catalan. Wow, that's a huge topic. How many minutes is this? Let's have a look. So once I click on this, 15 minutes. The previous game we have, um, and uh, he talks about this some variation of, some essential aspects of, the of the Catalan and you can go through it. Jonas Lampert talks about French Rubinstein variation. Uh, Erwin Lamy talks about the two knights uh, defense in the open games. And Alexis Giro uh, speaks about the bishop d2 line in the Grunfeld with white. Wow, Giro. You have Nihal Sarin with Andre Schulz. Wow, that's an interesting one. They talk about opening traps. I mean, let's have a look quick. Okay, I'm here with Nihal Zarin. Is this correct? Yes. But but your real name is just uh, Nihal, Nihal, and Zarin is uh, the Sorry. name of your father. Yes. And um, name of your mother is Shijin. I'm sorry. Shijin. Okay. And what are your parents by profession? Um, they're doctors. Yeah, both. Yes. Okay. And you are. I heard you are a strong chess player. Is this true? Okay. Yes. <laughs> What is your ELO rating? Right now I'm 24-24. 24-24. So this was recorded a couple of years ago when Nihal was 24-24. Now he's 25-98. But still this would be an interesting thing to go to go through. Vishnu Prasanna has spoken about the London system. That's interesting. Daniel King talks about the popular Italian game. Uh, Vidit Gujarati is here and he speaks about the H4 variation against the Grunfeld, an interesting idea. Andrew Martin speaks about the aggressive Trompowski. That's an idea with white. Robert Riss is, has Queen C2 variation in the Nimzo Indian. And the last one is by yours truly, Sagar Shah, and he speaks about the Rubinstein Nimzo Indian. Hi, this is Sagar Shah from Chess Bay Studio in Hamburg. The weather in this uh, city right now is pretty cool. It's uh, almost zero degrees. Wow, I, can't, I don't want to remember that time I was there. It was really very cold, but inside the studio it was warm. I speak about the interesting variation with uh, D5 and this line from Black's point of view. And I think uh, it's a nice 24 minute uh, story with the game between Botwinik, Capablanca starting it off and then how should Black play the position. I think it's uh, very good for you to improve your knowledge. So if you look at it, on an average there would be around 15 minutes of uh, video time into 20 videos that comes to 300 minutes. That's nearly 5 hours of video content which is almost equal to a DVD uh, or more than that. Now here you have the games database. And this is very interesting because here you can find all the annotated games. Uh, which are there in the opening encyclopedia and there are 38,000 of them which is quite a huge number so for example uh, what do we do you can first of all search by any position let's say you want to look at e4 e5 knight f3 knight f6 knight into e5 Petrov are there any annotated games for this I go to filter games I can just say position, copy board and I say okay 
and um, it will search through all the games in this and find me the positions uh, annotated game of Petrov as you can see there are games by Petra Pap, uh, Lars Schandorf, Skembris, Leonid Kritz, Konikowski, Igor Stahl, many people I can just open any one of the games for example let's have a look at this game here and you will see it's annotated from Skembris who is a GM and yeah you get good interesting ideas which are annotations by a GM so here you can get to know by openings you can also go players and try to find uh, if there are games of specific players for example if you would like to look at games by Carlson uh, you can write here and you will see 158 annotated games exist in this database and also what you could do is you can find by annotator for example if you want to see if Anand has annotated any games in this I write his name and I see 13 games are annotated by Anand and here is one of his victory against Magnus Carlsen from 2007 in Linares uh, and perhaps if I go down here uh, that's 1998 games of Anand very very interesting games that you can play through uh, over here and uh, there are many I think Italic is very well known uh, he, he does some really nice annotations of his own games and it's always nice to look at them uh, he talks about how he played specific opening ideas, middle game position and his analysis is very very deep on many occasions. So that's about the games database and the final part we come to is surveys and there are 6680 surveys in this and surveys are basically small parts portion of a specific line. So let's just assume that you want to look at a specific line which is in the English c4, e5, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, g3, d5, takes, takes, bishop g2 and knight b6. Okay, this is very well known and you want to look at opening surveys on this line. So once again, I go to filter games and I put the position as copy board and now all the surveys which are there of this position would come here and when I click on it it's like there are no words in this but only lines so these are uh, some of the assessments of the positions given and what are the options here you can see after d3 is the main position and black has a6 as one move queen e8 as another move there is queen d7 and then there is knight d5 or the main move a5 and then you study all of this this may not be the most precise analysis let's say this is done in 2008 but it's a starting point for your analysis you can take this and then you can go here and you can say okay in this position let me see what the engine says you press ctrl k you can start stockfish or komodo or whatever engine you have loaded in your computer and once you once you start this you can check the analysis here whether that's correct or not okay knight c3 is great queen b3 check is given here but you also find another interesting move queen g4 what happens after this you can put in and you can also do control s and sort of uh, replace the analysis in this it doesn't take too much time uh, to do that so this is really very uh, useful these surveys they might uh, really help you to pr as the starting point for your analysis of a specific opening. Um, I think that covers up uh, everything that we wanted to know about the opening encyclopedia. You have the ideas for your repertoire which is very nicely uh, all these tabs with open, semi-open games, closed games. You have the videos where you can find all the uh, video list over here and play through the videos then you have the ECO list which is the old format of the opening encyclopedia I don't think many people would use it uh, except for those who want to stick to the old ways 
and then you have the game databases which where you have all the annotated games and finally the survey uh, from this presentation you can understand how to use this opening encyclopedia if you found this useful you can uh, check in the description below for the links if you are from India and some of the adjoining countries in the Indian subcontinent you can purchase it from Chessbase India if you are from Europe or USA or from any other part in the world you can go to chessbase.com and buy this uh, resource which will help you to become a stronger player. This is Sagar Shah. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this.